Some people are fired from their jobs because they're simply not good at it, and that's valid. In WWE, that happens too. However, we have also witnessed some WWE employees get fired for the dumbest reasons over the years. You're fired! All right! Thank God! Stick around if you want to learn who they are. WWE released Zelina Vega in November 2020, and her firing drew significant attention due to the unusual circumstances surrounding it. WWE introduced a new policy in late 2020 that restricted wrestlers from engaging with third-party platforms like Twitch, Cameo, and OnlyFans. The company mandated that wrestlers hand over control of these accounts to WWE, with a significant portion of the revenue going to the company instead of the wrestlers themselves. This was part of WWE's broader effort to control and monetize the brand of its talent outside of traditional wrestling programming. Zelina Vega was notably outspoken against this new policy. She continued to use her Twitch account and even launched an OnlyFans page after the ban was announced. This defiance was a direct violation of WWE's new mandate. Reports indicate that Zelina was making substantial income from these platforms, more than her WWE salary in some cases, which made her particularly resistant to the new rules. Just minutes before her release was publicly announced, Vega tweeted her support for unionization, saying, I support unionization. This tweet and her vocal resistance to the third-party ban suggested a broader disagreement with WWE's treatment of its talent as independent contractors, without the benefits and protections of regular employment. WWE's official stance was that Vega was released for breaching her contract by refusing to comply with the new third-party policy. The company emphasized that the policy was uniformly applied to all wrestlers, and Zelina's actions challenged WWE's authority and control over its talent. After her release, Zelina received support from various quarters, including fellow wrestlers and labor union leaders. The incident also brought renewed attention to the debate over wrestlers' classification as independent contractors and their rights. Zelina returned to her Twitch channel shortly after her release, indicating her commitment to maintaining her connection with fans through the platform. The firing of Zelina Vega thus highlighted significant issues regarding labor rights, income opportunities for wrestlers, and the extent of WWE's control over its talent's external engagements. The next entry on our list was fired because of a smile. Yup, Paul London's firing from WWE in 2008 is often regarded as one of the more unusual and perplexing dismissals in professional wrestling. Paul London joined WWE in 2003 and quickly became known for his high-flying style and athleticism. He initially formed a successful tag team with Billy Kidman and later with Brian Kendrick. London and Kendrick were notable for their long reign as WWE Tag Team Champions a testament to their in-ring chemistry and popularity with fans. The specific incident that led to Paul London's firing occurred during a backstage segment on WWE television. The storyline involved Vince McMahon, and during a dramatic scene where McMahon was supposed to walk through a group of wrestlers with a serious expression, Paul London was seen smiling. This seemingly minor infraction was enough to put him on the radar of WWE management in a negative way. While the smile incident is often cited as the direct cause, several other factors likely contributed to London's dismissal. There were rumors that Paul London had an attitude that did not sit well with WWE management, and this perception may have been exacerbated by his actions during the Vince McMahon segment, which was seen as unprofessional. Like many wrestlers, Paul London had creative ideas for his character and matches. However, it's been suggested that he often clashed with WWE's creative team over the direction of his character and his role in the company. Before his release, London had suffered several injuries that kept him off television for extended periods. This lack of visibility, combined with the other issues, likely made him an easy target when WWE was looking to make roster cuts. After his release, Paul London wrestled on the independent circuit and in various promotions worldwide. He succeeded in these arenas, often praised for his in-ring talent and ability to connect with audiences. He also ventured into acting and other entertainment fields. In interviews post-WWE, Paul London spoke about his time in the company and the circumstances surrounding his firing. 
He often reflects on WWE's rigid and sometimes punitive corporate environment. London has expressed that while he enjoyed the opportunities he had in WWE, the company's atmosphere and handling of certain situations left much to be desired. Paul London's firing is a classic example of how even minor actions can have significant consequences in WWE's highly controlled environment. But unlike our next entry, it's not like the man stole anything. He was just smiling. Emma, an Australian professional wrestler, signed with WWE in 2011 and gained prominence in NXT. She became popular for her quirky dance moves and engaging personality, which resonated with fans. Emma was one of the pioneering women in NXT, helping to elevate the women's division through her matches with fellow wrestlers like Paige. In June 2014, Emma was arrested for shoplifting an iPad case valued at approximately $21 from a Walmart in Hartford, Connecticut. This incident occurred just after a WWE event. The arrest report indicated that Emma had passed all sale points without paying for the item. She was charged with sixth-degree larceny, a misdemeanor in Connecticut. Initially, Emma pleaded not guilty to the charges. Her lawyer later stated that the incident was a mistake and that Emma had used a self-checkout machine, accidentally failing to scan the item. Despite this explanation, Emma was required to perform community service as part of her punishment. WWE has a strict policy regarding its employees' conduct, especially regarding legal issues. Given the high-profile nature of WWE and the potential for negative publicity, the company reacted swiftly. On July 2, 2014, WWE announced it had released Emma from her contract. The company's official statement read, WWE has come to terms with the release of WWE diva Emma as of today. The decision to release Emma was met with significant backlash from fans and within the wrestling community. Many felt that the punishment was too severe, especially considering the minor nature of the offense and the fact that it appeared to be an honest mistake. This fan outcry, combined with the relatively low value of the item in question, led WWE to reconsider its decision. Later that same day, WWE issued a follow-up statement and take appropriate punitive action for her violation of the law. Although Emma was reinstated, the incident affected her WWE career. She continued to wrestle in WWE, but her character and storylines did not seem to recover the same momentum they had before the incident. Emma was eventually released from WWE again in October 2017. After her final release from WWE, Emma returned to the independent wrestling scene under her real name, Tennille Dashwood. She found success in various promotions, including Ring of Honor and Impact Wrestling, where she continued to showcase her talents and rebuild her career. In interviews following her departure from WWE, Tanil Dashwood discussed the shoplifting incident, expressing that it was a misunderstanding and emphasizing that she had no intention of stealing the item. For some odd reason, it seems like it's always the WWE women being fired because the next entry on our list is also a legendary diva. In 2005, Dawn Marie, whose real name is Dawn Saltis, was released from her WWE contract while pregnant. This led to a wrongful termination lawsuit against the company, eventually settled in 2007. In interviews, Dawn Marie has shared that her firing occurred shortly after she informed WWE management about her pregnancy. She was initially taken off the road and removed from planned appearances, including an ECW reunion show. Despite her attempts to propose alternative roles that wouldn't involve in-ring performance, such as commentating or managing, WWE cited a lack of creative plans for her as the reason for her release, Dawn. Marie handled the situation professionally, and she maintained respect for Vince McMahon, even after the lawsuit. She stated that Vince McMahon respected how she managed the situation and that their interactions post-lawsuit were amicable. The next entry on our list is one of this generation's most talented female wrestlers. Serena Deeb joined WWE in 2009 and quickly made an impact as part of the Straight Edge Society, a faction led by CM Punk that promoted a drug-free, alcohol-free lifestyle. As part of her character, Serena famously shaved her head on television to demonstrate her commitment to the group's philosophy. The SES was known for its intense and controversial storylines, and Serena's dedication to her role was evident. Part of the Straight Edge Society, 
Serena Deeb was fired in August of 2010 for not maintaining the storyline's strict standards outside the ring. Despite her agreeing to shave her head for the character, she was seen drinking alcohol in public, which contradicted the group's straight edge gimmick and led to her release. This discrepancy was considered damaging to the credibility of the storyline and the faction. WWE strongly emphasizes that its performers maintain their on-screen personas in public, especially when those characters are part of major storylines. Following her release, Serena Deeb returned to the independent wrestling circuit. She worked for various promotions, including Ring of Honor, where she continued to showcase her wrestling skills and rebuild her reputation. In 2017, Serena Deeb participated in WWE's inaugural May Young Classic tournament, marking her return to the company. Although she did not win the tournament, her performance was well received, leading to her being hired as a coach at the WWE Performance Center. In this role, Serena contributed to the training and development of the next generation of WWE talent. Serena Deeb has spoken about her firing in various interviews over the years. She acknowledged the reasons for her release and reflected on the lessons learned from the experience. Deeb emphasized the importance of understanding the responsibilities of being a public figure and representing a major company like WWE. Now here's the thing. Serena Deeb was caught drinking. Jim Ross wasn't, but he was fired because of someone else's alcohol issues. Jim Ross, the legendary WWE commentator, was fired in 2013 after an incident at a WWE 2K14 panel during SummerSlam Access. The event featured the nature boy Ric Flair, who was heavily intoxicated. This incident took place a few months after Ric Flair's son, Reed Flair, tragically passed away from a heroin overdose. Ric Flair was struggling deeply with the loss of his son, which contributed to his erratic behavior. He admitted in interviews that he made bad choices and dealt with immense guilt and self-blame, stating that he felt responsible for Reed's death because Reed was with him when he died. Ric's grief led to increased alcohol consumption, which was visibly apparent during the panel. During the event, Flair's intoxicated state became disruptive, leading to an off-script and uncomfortable situation. Despite Jim Ross's attempts to manage the situation, the chaos and unprofessionalism were too significant to overlook. WWE officials decided that JR, as the senior figure and host, was accountable for not controlling the situation better, resulting in his termination from the company. Jim Ross acknowledged that the decision to have Flair on the panel was questionable, given his recent personal trauma. He reflected that it was a bad idea to include Ric Flair at that time, considering the emotional and psychological state Flair was in due to his son's death. Still, it doesn't make much sense to fire one man for another man's behavior, does it? But if you think that was weird, let's talk about one of the weirdest firings in pro wrestling history. Frankie Kazarian's departure from WWE in 2005 has an interesting backstory involving a request from management that he refused. Known for his athleticism and in-ring prowess, Kazarian joined WWE's developmental territory, OVW, in 2005. He made his television debut on the July 14, 2005 episode of Velocity, a secondary show designed to showcase emerging talent. During his short run on Velocity, he competed against wrestlers like Nunzio and Scotty Too Hotty. Despite showing promise, he was primarily used in lower card matches and didn't receive significant character development or storyline opportunities. According to multiple sources, Frankie Kazarian was asked to cut his hair to fit the company's image requirements. However, Kazarian valued his long hair and felt it was integral to his persona. Consequently, he declined the request. His refusal to cut his hair was the reason he was fired. Yup, WWE released him in August 2005, only six months after joining the company. A seasoned professional wrestler, Frankie had built a strong reputation in the independent circuit and TNA before signing with WWE. The independent circuit and TNA were known for providing wrestlers with more creative freedom than WWE's more scripted and controlled environment. After leaving WWE, Kazarian returned to TNA, where he re-established himself as a top performer. He enjoyed considerable success, winning multiple championships and participating in high-profile storylines. 
Kazarian's decision to leave WWE ultimately allowed him to pursue opportunities that were better aligned with his career goals and wrestling style. Kazarian has spoken about his WWE experience in various interviews. He appreciated the learning experience and exposure WWE provided. Despite showing promise, he was dissatisfied with the direction his career was taking and with some of the demands placed on him by WWE management. The thing about WWE is, though, you're fired if you don't do what they tell you to do, but you are also fired if you do exactly what they tell you to do. Allow us to explain. The firing of Muhammad Hassan from WWE is one of the most controversial in the company's history, largely due to the sensitive nature of his character and the timing of certain events. Muhammad Hassan, portrayed by Mark Kapani, was introduced in 2004 as an Arab-American character who felt discriminated against in post-9-11 America. Despite his rapid rise and significant storyline involvement, his career took a dramatic turn in 2005 due to a highly controversial segment on SmackDown. On the July 7, 2005 episode of SmackDown, Hassan was involved in a storyline where he summoned masked men to attack The Undertaker. This segment aired just days after the real-life London bombings, leading to a public outcry and significant negative media attention. Given the real-world context, the depiction was seen as highly insensitive and drew severe criticism from various media outlets, including the New York Post and TV Guide. The backlash was intense, and UPN, the network airing SmackDown at the time, pressured WWE to remove the Muhammad Hassan character from their programming. As a result, Hassan's storyline was abruptly terminated, and he was written off TV following a match against The Undertaker at the Great American Bash on July 24, 2005, where he was given a last ride through the stage, symbolically ending his WWE career. Following this incident, WWE decided to release Mark Copani in September 2005. The controversy surrounding the character, the segment, and the network's pressure effectively ended Muhammad Hassan's run in WWE and led Kopani to retire shortly after that, all because the man did what they told him to do. Thankfully, he didn't call the audience pricks, though. That would have been the final straw. God knows no wrestler in WWE has ever insulted the audience. Brad Maddox had been with WWE since 2008, initially gaining recognition as a referee before transitioning to an on-screen role. He notably served as the general manager of Raw and was involved in various storylines, often as a controversial figure aligned with the authority. His tenure as GM and his time as a wrestler kept him in the public eye, though he faced criticism and mixed reactions from fans and colleagues. Brad Maddox's firing from WWE in 2015 stemmed from an incident during a pre-dark match promo at the SmackDown tapings. Maddox used the phrase, cocky pricks, while addressing the Indianapolis crowd, which reportedly upset Vince McMahon and other WWE officials. Despite the seeming triviality of the remark, it led to his immediate release from the company. After the incident in Indianapolis, Maddox was informed by WWE officials to pack his things and leave. Vince McMahon did not allow Maddox an opportunity to explain or defend himself, marking an abrupt end to his WWE career. Maddox himself confirmed these details in interviews following his release, expressing surprise at the decision and highlighting the lack of communication from Vince McMahon before his firing. The firing highlighted WWE's sensitivity to public remarks and their strict control over the conduct and presentation of their talent, even during non-televised segments. Despite the end of his WWE career, Maddox continued to pursue opportunities in the wrestling world under different personas and outside the WWE umbrella. I wonder if the next wrestler on our list also insulted the audience of WWE's rival promotion during his appearance there while still under contract. Robbie McAllister, one half of the WWE tag team, the Highlanders, experienced an unusual and highly publicized firing from WWE in 2008. His termination was largely attributed to his appearance at a TNA event while he was still under contract with WWE. This incident became a defining moment in his career, ultimately leading to his release. The key event occurred when McAllister was spotted on camera attending a TNA taping in March 2008. This appearance was seen as a significant breach of WWE's expectations for their talent, 
as it essentially promoted a rival organization. McAllister said his decision to attend the TNA event was not intended to cause any issues, but rather a personal choice that led to unforeseen consequences. He admitted that it was a dumb move and recognized the lack of benefit it brought to either organization. McAllister faced immediate backlash from WWE officials and his peers after the incident. He recounted how he returned to the hotel where WWE talent was staying and took responsibility for his actions, understanding the gravity of his mistake. This action, while commendable, did not mitigate the fallout. The backlash included significant reprimands from senior WWE figures, including The Undertaker and Fit Finlay, who clarified the infraction's seriousness. If there's one man you don't want to irritate, that would be the dead man. McAllister later reflected that the TNA incident was the final straw rather than the sole reason for his and his partner's release. He admitted that he and Rory McAllister, the other half of the Highlanders, did not effectively advocate for themselves within WWE. Their lack of backstage politicking and self-advocacy contributed to their lack of momentum in the company, and they failed to give WWE sufficient reasons to retain them. It could have been worse, though. Imagine if, God forbid, Robbie McAllister would have shown his personality on screen. A former WWE backstage interviewer, Dasha Fuentes, was released in April 2019. Her firing surprised many, including Dasha herself, as the reasons provided by WWE were somewhat vague and unexpected. According to Fuentes, her manager told her that she was being released due to a series of events, specifically mentioning a minor mistake during a live interview with Roman Reigns on Monday Night Raw. During this interview, there was a tiny little blip, but Fuentes believed it was not significant enough to warrant her termination. She was initially taken off TV and informed she would not be going to WrestleMania, which led her to think she might be sent back to NXT, where she had previously worked as a ring announcer. Further details emerged, suggesting that Vince McMahon was not pleased with Fuentes' performance. Reports indicated that McMahon found her speech to be redundant and pausing, which contributed to the decision to let her go. However, new information provided by Dasha contradicts Vince McMahon's initial claims. The now AEW employee Dasha Gonzalez recently told Chris Jericho on his podcast that she was repeatedly told to dial it down when working for WWE as backstage interviewer Dasha Fuentes. According to the confused announcer, WWE management often told her she had too much personality and to refrain from showing any facial expression. Basically, they wanted a robot. The baffling thing is that some of WWE's best interviewers had bags of charisma. Just think of Mean Gene, Jonathan Coachman, and Renee Young. All of those names shared one thing in common. They had personalities. For some weird reason, however, WWE didn't want that from Dasha. They fired her shortly after WrestleMania 35. While Gonzalez admits she wasn't a great fit for the company generally, it's clear that they stripped away everything that would have got her hired in the first place. Despite the abrupt end to her WWE career, Fuentes reflected positively on her five years with the company, emphasizing her growth and the opportunities she had to travel and work numerous shows while recovering from an injury. Which of these WWE fearings made the least amount of sense? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section and before you leave, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Ring Rivals so you don't miss the next ones.